In this video we're going to have a look at loops and how we can change them. If you take a look at this mesh and if I go to polygon mode here and select my loop selection tool and I'm picking one of these loops here so we have a very nice loop going here. The first question is what is a polygon loop? Well a polygon loop is a selection of continuous polygons and this selection travels along a path that is defined by opposite edges. And ring selections in edge mode, for example, work very similarly. A ring selection is a selection of edges that are not connected but opposite each other. So this also is a selection that travels along a path that is defined by opposite edges. And the reason these loop selections work is because we have four-sided polygons here. And if you take a look at one of these polygons, you will find that we have two opposite edges going in one direction and two opposite edges going in the other direction. And that is one of the reasons why it's pretty important in subdivision surface modeling to use only four-sided polygons. If you have triangles and n-gons, your loop selections will not really work. And the reason is because triangles, for example, do not ha really have opposite edges and n-gons, on the other hand, have multiple opposite edges. And that means that your loop selections will be random and you cannot control them. So now we're going to have a look at some of the loops we have here and we're going to try and change them. So for example, this loop is perfectly fine, but if I select this loop here, we do get a loop but it's not really what I want. For this loop, for example, I would like this loop to come down around this corner and go straight to the center of this object without going down to the bottom of the object and coming up at this opening over here. And the same goes for this loop here. This one, I also want to come around this corner and go to the center of the object. And the third loop I want to change here is this one. So instead of having this loop go to the bottom of the object like it does now, it would probably make more sense to have it coming around the side of the object here. So we'll start by changing this loop here. And we're going to use the object that I copied earlier. So I'm going to hide this one. And let's make this one visible. So this is the version where we still have this triangle here. Now in order to change this loop, we're going to resolve this triangle a little differently. So instead of connecting these two points and then deleting these two edges, what we can do is select these two edges and connect them. So now we've created a four-sided polygon here and we have changed the flow of opposite edges. So that's basically what you do when you try and redirect a loop. You change the flow of the opposite edges uh, because loops, as we've learned earlier, are selections that travel along paths that are defined by opposite edges. And now if I go to edge mode here and do a ring selection, I will get a selection like this. And changing the geometry over here has also fixed the problem back here. So now I'm getting the loop that I want. And here at the front it's not going down into this opening and around the bottom of the object anymore but it stops before the opening and goes to the center of the object. So I think that makes much more sense. Now let's have a look at this loop here. We could of course try and do something similar by bringing this loop around to the center of the object here at the front, but I don't really want to do that. I think it makes more sense to have this loop continue all the way to the front of the object. And in order to do that, we will need more geometry over here. 
So what I'll do to change this loop is I'm going to select these edges here and dissolve them. And then I'm going to select these edges. And I'm going to use edge cut with two subdivisions to get these additional edges here. And now we can use the line cut tool and make a cut from this point over to this point here. And then we can dissolve this edge to turn this into a quad. And we have these two triangles here. So this one I'm going to get rid of by just welding these two points together. And that leaves one triangle. Now one way we could get rid of this triangle is by selecting these edges here and connecting them. So this will turn this triangle into a four-sided polygon. But we're creating a lot of extra geometry and I don't really want to do that. So another way of fixing this is by connecting these two edges here and then we can connect these two points. And now we can get rid of this edge here. And we have a four-sided polygon here. And we've only created one additional edge to get rid of this triangle here. So let's check if the loop is working. So now we have something like this. And that is looking a lot better. When you change the flow of your geometry, you always have to be careful because changing the geometry in one area of the mesh can have an effect on other areas of your mesh. So for example, we used to have a loop going down here. And if I try and select these polygons here, you can see these loops are no longer working. So we're going to have to try and fix that. And this issue down here will probably sort itself out once we change the flow of this loop, which is the third loop that I want to uh, that I want to change. So let's have a look at how we can redirect the flow of this loop. If I go to edge mode and do a ring selection of these edges, we already know that the selection travels along a path of opposite edges. So once again, we have to change the flow of the opposite edges. And in this case, I don't want this edge to be the opposite edge of this one. I need one of these edges to be the opposite edge of this one. So one way to do that is by selecting this edge here, and we can use an option called spin edge. And spin edge changes the orientation of an edge. And in this case, we have to use it twice in order to bring this loop back to here. So now if I make a ring selection here, you can see that we've changed the flow of these edges. And we now get a loop that is looping around the side of the object instead of the bottom here. Now the problem with this is that we've destroyed two of the other loops. So this one down here is no longer working. This was a loop that was going around here. And we've also changed another loop that was going around here. So let's see how we can fix that. And actually, that's pretty easy. So I don't want this point here connected to this point and this edge down here. But we have to connect this point to this one. So let's do that. And now we can dissolve this edge here and we can connect these two points. And by doing this, we've probably fixed both of these loops. So we have this loop working again and we have this loop working again. And the only problem that's left is this triangle that we've created. So in order to get rid of this, I will just dissolve this edge here which creates an n-gon, but now we can connect this point to this geometry over here. And that means we have to create a couple of more edges here. So I'm going to select these edges here and connect them. And then I can connect these two points. And because we've 
added additional geometry here we also have to create some more edges over here so I'm going to connect these edges here and then we can weld these two points together and you can see we still have a triangle here but we can easily get rid of this one by going to edge mode and just deleting this edge loop here I'm going to select these edges here and move them over a little bit to spread out the geometry a little more evenly. So we could also select some of the points here and move these down a bit. And maybe let's select these ones. I'm going to scale these down to zero and move them down a little bit as well. So now we have this loop going around the side of the object. We have these loops still working and the other ones should still be working as well. And down here you can see I can now select this loop here again. The problem is it's not looping all the way. It stops here at the back. So in order to get this one looping what I'll do is I'll change the orientation of this edge here. So we can use spin edge and then we can move this point over a little bit like so. Maybe let's move both of these points down a little bit. I'm going to move this one over a little bit. So now we have another loop going here and we've changed this one a little bit. It's now intersecting with this loop but everything is now working and I have the loops that I want. So in order to finish this object, let's create a symmetry object and I'm going to make the symmetry object editable. Let's get rid of these tags here. And I'm going to put this in a subdivision surface object. And let's check our loops one more time. So we have this loop working. We have this one working here. So we've got these ones. And of course we have our details which are encapsulated in their own areas here. So everything's looping nicely now. Okay, so this is the end of this tutorial. This is our final result. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you again soon.